Good morning everybody, Slay here. I don't think I feature this vehicle. This is DJ7W3 Tier 10 Multi-Role Japanese Fighter. Um, this plane is really interesting. It definitely gets interesting after Tier 8 once you get your 30s in this line. And the Tier 9 is just absolutely overpowered for what it is. And the Tier 10 just takes the Tier 9 and slightly improves it. Um, so the Tier 10 is probably one of the weaker ones of the line, just you because of the fact that the it's mediocre uh, speed, are. mediocre maneuverability, and decent guns, but at Tier 10, where everything is fast, etc. Uh, but one thing this plane does excel at is knocking out um, GAs and knocking out heavy fighters that are stupid enough to come low to you. <laughs> like this one here. like that we take the uh, garrison so the enemy team has a player in a GA so I could only assume this guy is rushing straight off to the mining plant so that is my goal I'm gonna go to the mining plant and the cool thing is about this plane you have two 250 kilogram bombs on the bottom uh, you can use those to your advantage and basically just clean up if he was to bomb that middle and miss something I could go in and finish it off so without further ado Let's see what we can find here. Here comes the J7W3 right at me. And that is what you can focus on. <laughs> I don't see the enemy GA. So clean some of this up. We have a GA here, so I'll come in and knock out some of these standpipes for him. It's P228 flying really. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video? Kill those heavy fighters who are stupid enough to come low. This guy seems to be one of them. Fortunately, he was able to climb a lot faster than I can in this thing. But still not stopping us from pretty much dominating this mining plant. I'm just trying to clean this up. I don't really want to drop my bombs just yet. There's that P228 again. Apparently I offended him, but he's going to turn back on me, I imagine. Looks like he's done with me. Let's see if I can sneak through. Drop my bombs right here. Should be able to wipe out these targets right here. That should do it. Alright, moving on. Looks like the uh, player has moved on to my garrison, which is weird. I don't know why you'd ever do that, to be honest with you. They took the airfield in the middle, which is pretty alarming. I'm going to have to go take it back. Um, but it is what it is. I'm not really worried right now. There's some fighters above me, but it looks like they're not engaging me, for the most part. And if they are, I'll turn right on them. And this is where this plane excels at, wiping out GAs, especially these German GAs, with their low hit points. Uh, I hope he didn't drop bombs. Do not go head on versus this aircraft. Um, yeah. So, as you see, the guns on this thing are just devastating. <laughs> it's a uh, Pretty fun plane to play, I ain't gonna lie. It's a huge departure from the uh, Japanese line, you know, prior to tier 8, but you get used to it, especially by tier 10. And once you can aim these 30s, it is just absolute beast to play. You know, once you score any of these hits, the potential DPS you can do on a plane is just devastating. 
So I'm going to go try and defend my uh, mining plant. The player uh, died, respawned over there. So if I can go defend that mining plant, we should be good to go. F2H coming right down on me. Ow. These heavies seem to love me this game. I'm going to turn away from him. I need to get to that mining plant as quick as I can. I'm just hoping this F2H doesn't make a full loop and come right back for me. It looks like he's kind of moving fast away. LA-160 past me. He's moving away. Not on a lot of hit points to deal with this guy, but it doesn't look like he's doing too much. He's strafing. Must be waiting on his armament to load out. You don't ever want to go head on with these guys either. And you don't want to sit behind them like I'm about to do. Um, I could be feeding him here, but I'm hoping my shots alarmed him just like it did. And it caused him to turn away and basically not want to fight me. So now from here I can go to the middle pretty comfortably and uh, go hopefully take that airfield back. If we take the airfield, it's going to be a pretty huge step this game. Although we are ahead in the points um, and we're going to keep being ahead because the fact that we have the mining plant you definitely want to secure the middle in this map uh, it is one of the most important points the only reason I went to the mining plant is because I am the only human here on my t on my side and yeah not gonna be able to uh, do too much if we don't hold the middle so here comes Ellie one second hang in there you'll soon be cut off from gonna die to squall hopefully again. not support will not be available so as you see, you could pretty much hang with Keep most of these guys. Victory is almost ours. I really don't want to die to squall. Field is destroyed. We need to stay alive. I know oh, I stayed alive there, but I'll take it. So, guys, that was the J7W3. Let's go back to the hangar. I was able to pull up the uh, Lambert medal, uh, which is you know, awarded for 400 capture points in a multi-role fighter. But I'm hoping I was able to demonstrate the superior firepower of this plane. Uh, the fact that it could just wipe out a GA in no time. You have no problem taking out the IL-40s, IL-40Ps, uh, but those German GAs are especially an easy target for what they are. But let's go back to the hangar, show you some of the <laughs> astonishing stats on these guns. And uh, we'll call this one a day. But I hope this uh, video is going to help you make a decision to not give up after you get to the A7M in the Japanese line. Once you know, once you get to that tier eight, it's pretty daunting to get the first version of this plane. But I'm telling you guys right now, stick with it. Get the 30s. Once you get the 30s on that tier eight, it is a super overpowered plane to play. Um, I've been able to get some really dumb scores in that thing. And once you get to tier 9, it is <laughs> it is very funny what you can do in that plane because you can literally just sit there, you're a tier 9 uh, with tier 10 stats, essentially, and you were facing tier 8s. So it's pretty much not very fair. <laughs> so yeah, let's check what I was able to do. So I was able to pull up almost 6,000 damage to air targets. I didn't really drop my bombs a lot there. Um, I could have been a lot more effective, but I was doing a lot of defending. So when you're defending you're obviously not going to be dropping your bombs but 6,000 air damage is pretty damn good uh, I was only able to wipe out nine air targets but again those were key targets uh, such as that GA and you know their, their GA player was doing work doing pretty good uh, but I was just able to stop him there so shout out to uh, Mosasar um, you were a good GA player but 
Yeah, you had to take your bots let you down there. So let's go to the upgrades. So again, four thirties. These are three hundred DPS thirties. So they're the strongest thirties you can get. Um, not the best rate of fire, but let's go compare those to the Aidens on the UK line. So if you look at the Aidens, they're 330. They're slightly faster. Um, they have a fire, a higher rate of fire. They do slightly more DPS, but they're on a heavy platform. You won't find 30s like this on a multi-roll. Uh, no other multi-roll in the game gets this strong of firepower. Uh, the closest thing to it, I mean, there there really is no close thing to it um, when it comes to 30s. Now, when you're talking giant guns and meme cannons, yes, the I-215 with its 257s is a lot stronger, and that is my next line I'm going to go down uh, because I absolutely love the TA-152 TA uh, line. So if I can push down to this I-215, I feel like it's going to be like flying a TA at Tier 10. So I'll definitely push down to it. But of the multi rolls I've unlocked so far, you got the S7U that has 20s. You have the German that has 20s. Um, so you know you're seeing a trend here. A lot of the multi rolls I've unlocked have 20s so so far, except for the this Japanese line with its 30s. And look at that gun arm. It's 73. That's that's just incre incredible for a <laughs> for a tier 10 um, multi roll line. So again, it drops two 250 kilogram bombs, which is huge. That's a 4,400 damage, 75 splash radius. So I was able to clean up the middle. Uh, you saw I was able to use my guns and strafe the middle there. So you can effectively take a mining plant by yourself. It's gonna take some time, but especially if you're facing an enemy and he's in a uh, GA, or you're facing a bunch of GA bots and there's two mining plants, don't go to your mining plant, go to their mining plant. When you go to their mining plant, one, you, again, I've always said this, you're gonna get credit for killing them and you're gonna get credit for dropping your bombs and killing the targets so you always want to go to their mining plant if you're in this thing you have the speed to get there it's just not very fast at tier 10 880 that's not really impressive at tier 10 it's definitely a slow fighter but if you look here 10 you know turn turn rate which is pretty damn good for a multi-roll uh, the 215 has like some like 14 seconds the f7u uh, again some like 12 or 14 seconds so, i mean this thing's can hang with the best. I mean, I was hanging with those fighters, no problem. Now, if those fighters were ultra aces or in a player's hands, yeah, you're not going to outturn a fighter. It's just not going to happen. But that's okay because when they're coming head on with you, if you can kill them in that head on pass or significantly critical strike them, then yeah, there's not much going on there. Um, there was two or three times that game that I was able to just head on someone and just wipe them out before they even had a chance to turn on me. So as for altitude, this thing is a low hanger. I mean, you're sitting around 1600, but that's just enough to engage fighters, engage GA, and engage those dumb heavies that come come down and want to, you know, mess with you. A heavy is going to have no chance versus this thing in its altitude. It's just the way it's going to be. Now, if you see a J7W3 player and he's at like two, three thousand altitude, take advantage of him. Uh, that's way out of his pocket. He, his maneuverability is going to be next to nothing up there. Just go kill him. Um, but if this guy is defending the cap, he's staying at altitude, do not go head on with him. Do everything you can to maneuver you know, around him, but man, the only way you're going to be able to really take this thing out uh, reliably is with two people. Uh, use you know, bait and switch, so basically have one guy start going head on, one guy comes from the side, flanks him, then you could wipe it out pretty easily. But do not go head on with this thing if you're by yourself. I don't think there's much more to say about this plane though. This has uh, been an interesting line to go down. Again, it starts with superior turn rate fighters. I mean, these are the best turn rate fighters in the game, hands down. Uh, the Spitfires are close, the Keys are close, but the A7 and the A6 line, you really can't beat it uh, for what they are. The A7M is arguably the best tier 7 turner in the game. Uh, but then you move on to the J7 line, and the J7s, they are so different <laughs> than what you're used to facing but if you look here it's not just off this line they come off the key line too so i mean it's like that a6 line just ends at tier 7 and then a new line begins that's the way i like to look at it um because these j7s are unique in everything they are uh, but again once you get that gun armament i mean look at tier 9 you have the same gun armament power 
at tier 10 as you do tier 9. Because these are the same 30s that the tier 10 gets, but you get them at tier 9, but you're facing tier 8. <laughs> Just to use your imagination. I'll be putting out a video on probably the J7W2 uh, here in the next couple days just to show you guys how absolutely overpowered this thing is at tier 9. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's much more to say about this. I do appreciate you watching, guys, and uh, I have a ton of fun making these videos for you. Looking forward to this weekend. This weekend's attrition. Uh, this is going to be my favorite, obviously, <laughs> mode of is, is attrition. Um, we have found ways to just kind of, I don't want to say exploit, but we have found ways around invasion. And you can completely cheese invasion, whereas attrition, it's not so much cheesing. You go, you play, you play hard, you kill players, you kill enemies, and that's what the game's all about. It's a deathmatch. It's really fun. But uh, some people are starting to like evasion, and that's cool. Invasion, I think it has a place in the game. Just put it in the game, tune it a little bit, but let us have a choice of which version we want to play. Um, I, myself, I would spend most of my time in attrition or conquest because I like to do turn fighting. But if I ever am feeling froggy and want to play my GA, I would probably play Invasion just for, you know, um, SMG. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and you guys have a good day. And uh, that is J7W3, Tier 10 Japanese Multiroll. Take care.